In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And welcome to this, our video version of worship for the fifth Sunday of Easter. And time is rolling along. We're now in May, um, but we're still in the season of Easter as we remember Christ's resurrection from the dead and the new life that God brings to us. We're going to turn to prayer. Let us come before God in thankfulness and humility, acknowledging those ways in which we have failed to be faithful disciples. For the times when we have kept your love to ourselves and not shared it with those around us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those times when we have known what you require of us, but chosen not to do it. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For those times when we have been less than you created us to be and missed opportunities to glorify you through our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our prayer for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. In our reading today, Jesus speaks of how he is the vine. I'll be exploring that uh, in a few moments, but first Mel is going to do the reading for us. The reading this morning is taken from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. The grapevine is one of the great features of horticulture in warmer climates than ours and is common across Israel and Palestine. The grapevine features in quite, features quite a lot in the Bible uh, and is often used as a symbol for the people of Israel. It's always used, though, when it is used like that, it's always used in a negative way, as in the people of Israel are becoming like a barren vine or they're becoming overgrown or they're becoming worthless and so Jesus in this passage is probably making quite a bold claim that where the people of Israel have failed he is the true grapevine. Now this passage has much to encourage us in it But there is also a lot of challenge for us, for grapevines need quite a lot of looking after and they certainly need pruning if you're going to get a good crop of grapes. Apparently you don't even get any grapes for the first three years or so, but you keep pruning and encouraging the new growth. You need to have 
good soil to begin with, and then the grapevine will spread out. And usually in modern farming, they'll be encouraged to grow along a trellis, uh, but they can grow on walls or around doors or very low to the ground. They don't grow in straight lines either. They're not a neat plant, but the viticulturalists will train them in where they need to go. When there is a plentiful harvest, the grapes bring great joy. As fruit, or to make into wine, or to save for later as raisins. But if you've put a lot of work into the vine and it produces nothing, then that's very frustrating. Apparently, an unfruitful vine isn't even any good as firewood, so it really is just waste. Now, you can see this, uh, this tip about how to prune your vine, and most of you do not have vines. So I'm not going to make this into a horticultural, horticulture lesson, but I just want to emphasise that pruning is very important. When the vine is properly pruned, you are much more likely to get a good crop. And Jesus here is saying that he wants to see a good crop. And we are either part of that good crop, we are bearing fruit, or we are not. And if we are not bearing fruit, then we're just waste. I think he is saying that we need to stay connected to him, to get our sustenance from him and in our lives let that show. It will show in the way that we treat others, in our generosity to good causes, in our patience with those who are difficult, in our deeds, in the way that we live our life. And if we stay properly connected to Jesus, then we will bear good fruit. The idea of being connected is an interesting one. Um, having lived through this pandemic of the past year or so, we've all missed being with people that we love and have generally found ways to stay connected. And it seems to me that just as we've been very creative, in ways to stay in touch with family and with friends, we need to be creative in staying in touch with Jesus. Primarily, this is about private prayer and the church. By praying and by being with God's people, that is how we abide in God. And as a church, we need to be abiding in Christ and producing fruit. And some of that pruning might be about letting go of some of the things that have been precious to us, but are no longer bearing fruit. We've got a survey going on at the moment to assess what we start up again in our building and how we stay in touch online as well. And in our weekly programme, there has been some serious pruning during the pandemic. Now there's a need to prayerfully start up again some of our activity and maybe start some new things. We need to prayerfully consider where the new growth might come and how we might nurture it. Where might we be producing the fruit that Jesus wants to see? So as a church and as individuals, let us seek to stay connected to Jesus, the true vine, to abide in him and to be fruitful disciples. Amen. And now Lev is going to lead us in our prayers. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done marvellous things. Jesus, you are the vine, and we your branches. Keep us abiding in your life and love. 
prune and tend your church, that it may bear fruitful disciples of your grace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Jesus, the Ethiopian official, sought to understand your good news. Expand the hearts and minds of all in authority to pursue truth and justice. Bring reason for all people to rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Jesus, your love sets our hearts ablaze. Open the hearts of all people to reflect this love in ways that nurture and foster character. Strengthen all who support parenting and provide guidance for the young. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Jesus, your love precedes us and we respond with adoration and praise. Give to all who are afflicted grace to bathe in this affection. Raise us to delight in your loving purposes through good times and bad. Jesus, we are made for your love. Do not forget the children you have made. May we all come to abide with you forever. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we're coming to the end of our video service for today and at the moment we're just beginning to think well we are thinking about how we reopen church and what activities we put on in church we've got a survey out um, if you will hopefully we might even post the link to the survey um, kind of below um, but uh, the survey will be around, so do, do check that out. Let us know what you think. We're trying to work out what's the best time to do services as we come back into the building. What's the best, you know, what are the activities that people want to come to at church? What are the ways in which we can serve our community? Um, so let us know what your thoughts are. And as we finish today, I'm going to finish with David uh, singing Ubi Caritas lovely Teze chant, where love is, God is. Um, and while we play that, I'll show some pictures of church life pre-pandemic, you know, when we were able to meet together and do things together. Um, perhaps going back a, a little while, actually, but we'll, we'll show some pictures of that. But first of all, a prayer of blessing. Jesus said, my father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Let us go out into the world to bear fruit and to glorify God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.